Good evening, viewers. Welcome to Restoration Hour with Prophetess Penim Tetwa. I believe you had a great day today, and I know you've been looking forward to tonight. I've also been looking forward to, to be with you, and thank you for allowing me to minister to you, you know, at your homes, everywhere where you are. And I really believe that uh, Restoration Hour is doing something very profound to you. The aim is to tell you and remind you who you are, how great you are, what God has in you, and who's, who's your God. The main aim is to remind you to shake yourself from that dust and, 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 and start rising up and be what God has called you to be. And I know that God has spoken that 2022 is our year where we're breaking forth and it's our year where there's so much deliverance, healing, and restoration. And I know that you are part of it in the name of Jesus. And I ask you that you, you write to us, you know, you, you comment, you write to us and tell us what this restoration hour is doing to you. It will bless us to know that God is doing something great in your life. Um, amen. So as we on the month of, of, of youth and the month of fathers, we're still celebrating our fathers. Please do. It was not about Sunday, but let's keep on celebrating them. Let's take them out for massages. They work so hard uh, for, for, for families. They work so hard for us, great leaders and all that. If you couldn't do it this Sunday, hey, month end is around the corner so bless your dad uh bless your father and sometimes it's not a biological father it might be a spiritual father it might be an uncle it might be a brother somebody a, a fa fatherhood it's a position somebody who has taken a position to be a father in your life to speak in your life to 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 lead and to do exactly what god has called fathers to do so let's spoil them and show let's show them how important they are just as our youth so to the youth i want to say once again to you there's space for you out there there is space for you out there sometimes it's not in the four corners of the church when we talk about space for you out there others they call it seven spheres of influence Others, they call it seven mountains of influence, but I love calling it seven gates of influence. That's me. And I'm saying to the youth, uh, there's space for you out there, and the sky is not the limit. I'm going to keep on telling you this until you grasp it, because you need to achieve things at this time, in this age. You need to run the race you know, in your youth, enjoy, you know, while you have all the strength, don't waste time. I wish I was in this when I was very young. Nonetheless, I thank God that at the end of the day, he saved me. So when I'm talking about the seven influences um, of spheres of influences or seven gates of influences, I'm talking about number one, the church. You know, there's space for you in the church, what God has given you, how God has blessed you with your talent that you, you have. You can use it in the church. And it doesn't even end there in the church. It goes to media. Media, there's space for you there. And God is looking for young people, spirit-filled, to fear him, who are going to go and build the kingdom of God there. So there's space for you in media. The sky is not the limit. Come with new things. You know, God is doing new things. These are the last days when the Spirit of God is poured. Sons and daughters seeing visions. That does mean that there are new things, new revelations, new things that we've never seen before. And it's in you. It's in you. So go out to media and, and, and take up your space. If God has blessed you with that, if that is what God has given you, do not be scared. Do not be discouraged. Do not fear. You've got him in you. So go there and take up your space. There's space <clears throat> in education. Some people are so blessed, you know, that God has given them 
the anointing to take over education. So go out there and take that space in education. Come with new things, you know, that has never been heard before. These are the times where God wants his glory to shine upon all on earth so that his name may be known, so that his power may be known, that as it was, it still is and will forever be. So go and take charge and take your space and dominate in education. You know, be that kind of a person that comes with new things, that they know that these students, when they get you, once they meet you, their life changes in each and every area and be elevated there. There's space in entertainment. Youth, go out there and take up your space. Take your position. There's nothing as it's evil. Media, it's evil. Entertainment, no. Go and take up your space and show up. There's space in marketplace. Marketplace, which is business. So go out there. And show up and take your, play, your place. They're waiting for you. There are certain things that are not happening because you have not taken your space. And don't fear anything. Remember, the battle is not yours and it's not about you. You sit in your position. Stay in your position and God will do the rest. And there's space in government. We need government people who fear God. We need government people who discern. We need government people who are going to be faithful according to how God wants us to be in the land of the living so that the, the glory of God can be revealed, so that all things can go the ways of God. So you go out there. If you know that God has called you even in governance, take up your space there. Start studying, researching, do something and build the kingdom of God there. Let it be known that there was a governor who was so young, spirit-filled with wisdom and discernment. They've never seen like one. Look at Daniel. Look at Joseph. They did it. Look at Esther. They did it. Look at Deborah. They did it. You need it there. So take up your space. It's your time. And there's space even in family. Family is a gate. It's a place of influence. So take up your space there. Maybe you're coming from a family, you know, where lots of things that you see around, they've never experienced it. They've never experienced the goodness of the Lord. They've never experienced people, you know, who are studying, people who've got business. They've never experienced marriages. They've never experienced a lot of things. Take up your, your space there. And let me tell you, when you stand at that gate and conquer that gate, it starts with family. When you conquer there, there's no way that you won't conquer anyway. So take up your space even there. Family, God, if somebody can say, I don't have family. All my family, they passed away. There is a family of God. God is a restorer. There are people who are waiting for you to open your heart, to open your arms, to love you and become your family. And churches are a family, you know. That is where, that's why God says we mustn't neglect fellowship because those are local places where you find yourself. So find a place and take your space there. Hallelujah. So we are wrapping up. The battle is not yours today. I believe it has blessed you and as it has blessed me. It has, believed me, as much as I'm ministering to you, it's blessing me because it must start with me before it comes to you. It has reminded me exactly who I am and I'm a go-getter just like how you are. So I thank God for, for what he's doing uh, in this, in this uh, sermon. We're going to continue uh, and I'm just going to go uh, try to be more uh, faster than before so that we can try and get everything done so we can wrap it up. Remember that the story of Jehoshaphat, it's about the three nations that were fighting Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat feared, you know, was terrified, and he called the, the nation of Judah and Jerusalem, and they fasted, and they prayed, and we've learned how they prayed, the promises of God, they reminded them, and we've learned so much about it. But last week, we, we, we left, uh, we need to start from verse 
21. Verse 21 says, And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord for his mercy endure it forever. May God bless the reading of his word in Jesus' mighty name. I pray, amen and amen. So this verse, uh, verse 21, it speaks of what Jehoshaphat did when he told them to, 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 to stand in a strategic way. He said when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy and, and for, his, for, 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 for the mercy endure it forever. Other versions says that for the mercies of God endure it forever. So what are we learning from this scripture is, again, when they were singing and praising, they were not just singing and praising things you know, they were not crying about things. Oh, Lord, we are so scared. Oh, Lord, what do I do now? Um, I don't have my house. I don't have my car. I don't have my job. But they reminded God that praise the Lord for his mercy and joy it forever. They started praising of who God is. And you know what I love, what they did here? He appointed them according to to their to their strength so it's very important that as you take up your space you're not all over you know not everything is for you otherwise all of us we will be found in media in entertainment in education everywhere but the bible says he appointed them they were appointed according to their strength why because can you imagine when you take somebody that is supposed to be preaching, that is a preacher, and you take them to be an usher, or you take them to speak, they 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 not they 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 not supposed to be uh, speaking, but they are worshippers. So he took them according to how they are, because he knew that where their strength is, that's where they excel. So where you find where you know your strength is, where you know exactly this is what makes me sleep well at night when I do it, even if I don't get paid, even if they don't say thank you, but this is what makes me happy as if I've won, you know, the best of, of thousands, you know, because I've done this. That's where your strength is. So he put them, he assigned them according to their strength. Your area of strength is very important. Your area of competence is very important. So it's, it's, impo it's, it's very, you know, it's very important that where God has called you to be, that is where you thrive. That is where you, 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 you really shine. That is where you take up your place. Because it's even going to help you not to look at your neighbor. It's, it's, it's going to help you not to look at who's making it on the other side. Because you just know this is who I am. I don't even suffer, you know, when I do my business. Some people, when they just start business, you know, they flourish. Because that's where their area is. So it's important to know that. After, after, knowing, after knowing where your strength is, it's important to grow in it. When you know this is my strength, my strength is worship. My strength is to just be on the camera. My strength is, you know, is to, is to be a miner. You know, I want to own mines. My strength is what, wherever, however God has called you. Maybe your strength is, is, is fashion. You know, find yourself there and thrive. Hallelujah. Don't be like somebody else. If your strength is that, then learn. Don't be somebody who just do things like everybody. Go deeper. Have somebody that's going to cancel you. Have somebody that's going to mentor you. Have somebody that is going to speak in your life. 
so that you can be great. You know, study about it, you know, slowly but surely, you know, and you will get there. It's very important. Taking up your space, make sure that it's an area of your strength. It's where you're competent. It's not where you know that no, even if I try. Can you imagine you taking the mic and you're trying to sing instead of people dancing and enjoying their sleeping? Others are going out. Why? It's not the area of your strength. So find your strength. And where your strength is, where your competence, where you're competent at, God will elevate you. He's waiting for you so that the glory of the Lord may be revealed in your life. Verse 22. Now when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, they, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. Number one, when you don't focus on the challenge you are facing, but start telling God that he is just that, that who he is, believe me, when they started praising, after he assigned them to take their place, you know, they started praising according to their strength. Can you imagine when a, a, a worshiper, somebody who's gifted in praising, who's anointed, who's got the who's spirit filled, when they started praising, the Bible says people of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who had come against Judah and they were defeated. So we're learning that they didn't, you know, moan. They didn't become victims. They started praising God. I can imagine what they were saying, you know, saying, oh God, you are so good. Your mercy endured forever. We might be going through this, but we know that your grace and your mercy is the one that will do it for us. Hallelujah. So they started telling God, just like Paul and Silas, they never focus on the problem. And the, and the problem of Paul and, and Silas, it was very massive. It was a massive problem to go to jail just because you, you did the work of God. You spoke and corrected what was not right, and they were thrown into jail. And when they started praising too, when they were in jail, they started praising. And the Bible says suddenly there was a great earthquake. There is power in praise. There is power in worship. There is power in telling God how great he is. And I want you to get me. I'm not saying, you know, be on denial of what is happening in your life. There are challenges in life. There are situations in life that when they enter your door, when they enter your door, they look at you and say, we want to see what you're going to say about your God. But despite that, because remember, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. We, we, we are conquerors. No matter what comes to, to defeat us, to destroy us, we're more than that. We, you know, we defeated the enemy thousand years ago. You know, we are more than, the Bible says, we are more than conquerors through Christ, through him who strengthens us. It's not our strength, but it is the strength of Jesus. So when Paul and Silas began to praise, and they were praising, you know, and God saw that they were praising and forgot about the situation and forgot about the problem. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. Hallelujah. There was a great earthquake. The Bible says the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all doors were open. Not one, not one door, but all doors when they started praising suddenly, and I'm saying to you, if you can just start focusing on praising, focus on what God has done for you. I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, focus on where there's a song that says, when I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back anymore. Remember when God has done that great thing for you and you sang that song praising, saying, Lord, 
I will never go back. I want to remind you now to start praising and worshiping where you're sitting right now. If there's a challenge in your life that has been facing you for years, a challenge that has been facing your family for years, a challenge that no matter what happens in your life, but this challenge is in front of you, no matter how you are thriving, no matter how you are prospering, but your family is not going anywhere. There are things that you can see that are binding them. And I'm saying to you, suddenly the foundations of the prisons were shaken and immediately the doors were open and doors, not one door, and everyone's chains were loosed. Everyone who was in that prison chained, their chains were loosed. Why? Because they were praising. Because the ones who understood who their God is, the ones who know that they serve a miracle working God, the ones who know that there might be other gods who are mighty, but I've got a God who's almighty, who's all above, above all that is mighty. They started, they started praising with faith. They started at praising, knowing that as we praise him, his glory must come down. When the praises go up, his glory must come down. And yes, suddenly even the chains that were chaining other prisoners, they, they, they just, you know, they were open in the name of Jesus. I just want to pray for you right now. In where you're sitting, where you are, as you're watching me, I lose every chain that has kept you in the name of Jesus. That, is, that has kept you that you're not moving. No matter how you pray, no matter how you love God, no matter what you do, but those chains that have kept you, I lose them. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare every prison open that was containing you right now. The prisons that were containing your father the prisons that were containing your mother, the prisons that contained your family, I declare them loose in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, prisons of addictions, I, I declare them loose right now, prisons of low self-esteem, where you have been kept, even if God is opening doors, he wants you to shine, but there's low self-esteem, I declare, I declare in the name of Jesus, that prison open, it is no more containing you in the name of Jesus. Prisons of inferiority complex in the rise up and be. You are great. You are blessed. You, you are all what God says you are. And I don't care what the enemy has said. I don't care what you think of yourself. I'm here to remind you that you are great, that you are a child of promise in the name of Jesus. Even if you have fallen, rise up and I command those prison doors to open in the name of Jesus. Prisons, you know, prison doors that keeps you to give up. Some people, they just give up. They're in the prison of giving up. Hey, you cannot give up. Greater is the one that is in you. He has a mission about your life. That is the reason you are alive. I declare that prison door to open right now in the name of Jesus. The prison of sickness. I speak healing. I declare you coming out. What couldn't, what couldn't heal your mom? What couldn't heal your father? What that is a lineage of generational curses of, of, of sickness. I break that chain right now in the name of Jesus. And I declare you coming out of that prison right now, not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Prisons of bad habits, prisons of bad choices. Yeah, when you are about to do something great and God is about to elevate you and God is about to promote you, suddenly there are people that are coming to make you do wrong choices. I declare you, I declare you right now, free in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are free indeed. You are coming out of those prisons where the enemy has kept you. And I don't care. Maybe you sat there, you said, hey, anyway, this is how I am. This is what people I know have been through. Now it's my time. It's not your time. God has spoken. It is time of breaking forth. It is time of restoration. It is time of healing. It is time of deliverance for you to come out 
out and break forth like rivers of living waters in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah and hallelujah. And where you are, say amen and amen. Verse 24, we continue. So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked towards the multitude and there, and there there were dead bodies fallen on the earth. No one had escaped. The Bible says, you know, when Judah looked, Jehoshaphat, Judah and Jerusalem, when they looked, they saw that, you know, everybody that came to fight them, no one escaped. And I declare in your life whatsoever, even enemies of your souls you didn't know about in the name of Jesus. I speak with authority invested in me that those people that they thought you were finished in the name of Jesus, you shall see them no more. None of your enemies will escape the judgment of God. Remember, we said Jehoshaphat means the judgment of the Lord. And indeed, as God is restoring you, as God is delivering you, as God is healing you and taking you out of those prisons, your enemies will not escape. Judgment will fall on them unless they escape to run to Jesus. Verse 25, when, the, when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables of dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off themselves more than they could carry away. And there were three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. Now listen to this. You know, that is why I'm saying it's not time to play. It's not time to be a victim. It, it's time to cry while you're praising. It's time to cry while you're speaking you know, life in your life, in yourself, life in your children, life in your finances, life in everything that's got to do with you. Because the enemies, it doesn't make sense. The Bible says, you know, it talks about the spoils that they gathered, which means the Ammonites and the Moabites, when they came to fight Judah, they already came with their precious jewelry. Who goes to war? with precious jewelry, unless somebody knows that, you know, we are going to fight these people and we know that we've defeated them already. So we might as well take everything that belongs to us and stay as we're going to kill all of them, destroy all of them and take their land. So there's no time for you to play because your enemy already, these enemies came with their valuables, which means in their mind, they already defeated Judah. Your enemies, let me tell you, already, hey, <laughs> they already, you know, they already have obituaries. They already know what to wear in your funeral. They already, you know, thinking of, of what they're going to drive to come there, how they're going to look, and you are crying. You are crying. You are saying, God, where are you? How can you leave me? No, it's time to rise up. Hallelujah. Yeah, the Bible says the Ammonites and the Moabites were very mighty. But what I love, Jehoshaphat's God is almighty. No matter, they trusted so much their gods. That is why they brought their valuables, you know, expensive jewelry. That's what the Bible says precious jewelry, their valuables, they brought them and are in abundance, not just small, but in abundance because they knew after we defeat them, we're going to take over. And I'm saying to you, rise up. And on the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Baraka for they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the place was called the valley of Baraka until this day. A valley of blessings. In Hebrew, Baraka means blessings. Wow. So what does this mean? It says it is a memorial till this day that after everything that the enemy tried to do to Jehoshaphat and God's nation, God turned it into a valley of blessings. What does that mean? Which means me and you 
as much as we're going through the valley of the shadow of death, as much as we're facing storms, as much as we're facing mountains, losing the loved ones, you know, economy going its way. But there is a valley of blessings. And that valley of blessings, it is there until now. It is a memorial to us to remind us no matter how the storms can be, no matter how the challenges can be, no matter how thrown down we can be, but there is a valley of baraka. There is a valley of blessings. And I speak those blessings upon you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and speak it as I'm in this valley of the shadow of death, as I'm in this valley of loss, as I'm in this valley in my finances, as I'm in this valley of confusion. Whatever you are going through, speak it and say, I speak and I declare, for it is written, whatever I decree and declare, it is established. Whatever you say, it becomes, it might not manifest now, but your words are so powerful. So speak it that I'm in a valley of Baraka now in the mighty name of Jesus. Verse 27, then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem with joy to the Lord, to what the Lord had made them rejoice over their enemies. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, you will rejoice. They returned and they rejoiced. It was joy because of what they saw God doing for them. I just want to remind you and encourage you that we still serve a miracle working God. It just needs us to, you know, to take our position, stay in our position and trust him for he has never lied in Jesus' mighty name. Verse 29, and the fear of God was on all kingdoms of those countries when they heard that the Lord has fought against the enemies of Israel. Wow, what a statement. So it shall be known that your God is not just might, but he's almighty. He is a king of kings. He is a ruler, all power, authority, dominion. It belongs to him, everything on earth. In fact, the earth is his footstool. In the heavens, he rules. Under seas, he rules. In the air, he rules. He is, he created everything. It shall be known. It says all kingdoms around the nations, when they heard what God has done for Jehoshaphat, they feared. Oh my God. They feared. When they heard what he did, they feared their God. Our God is a ruler. He never fails. And you are not a failure. I know you couldn't make it on that business. I know you couldn't make it on that interview. I know your children may not have passed. I know you didn't calculate well that they took your car. You didn't calculate well that some things you've lost. But hey, we are in a restoration time. We are in a season. And when it's a season, you cannot change it. Look, we are in a season of winter. So we cannot wear costumes right now and walk around and say, you know, it's winter, but we're going to speak summer. No, it is a season of winter. So what does it need us to do to dress warm? Because it's a season of winter and season of summer is coming. And I'm saying to you, season of restoration has come in the name of Jesus. So you speak it in Jesus' mighty name. Verse 30, it says, Then the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest all around. What does that mean? Realm is controlled by someone who's in authority or a king. When the Bible says the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, it does mean that where he was, he, he, he had authority on, you know, everything he ruled, what was given to him. It was his kingdom was just peaceful. It was peaceful because of what God gave him. He gave him rest. And the Bible, and when we, we, we translate the realm, it says it's only kings, you know, who, who have realms, who have authority to speak. And the Bible says, ye are gods. You've got authority. I'm speaking to you, ye God. You know, start speaking now. Start speaking in your realm. 
Start speaking in that house. Start speaking in that working environment. I don't know where you are now. Maybe you are driving. Start speaking in the name of Jesus with authority. And the Bible says, yeah, God. So you have authority. You've got authority. It's just that when you're frustrated, you speak words that, you know, that confuse the whole thing. Right now, you said you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. After 10 minutes, you say, oh, God, you know, I'm such a loser. Oh, God, I'm a failure. Oh, God, I'm this. But I say to you right now, change the way you speak because you've got authority. You know, yeah, God, you are sitting in your head. You are sitting with Christ in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, space talks to your area of competence. Where Jehoshaphat was ruling, you know, he was given peace. He was given rest because of how he took his position. Scientific term is called, is called space. They go there to mess or to the moon. They call it space, which means there's not, no one to occupy there. There's space. It's unoccupied. It's a territory waiting for those who wants to occupy it, who can go and occupy it. And I'm saying to you, take up your space right now. Go and occupy what you have left. Because God is waiting for you to take up your space. It's unoccupied. You know, it needs you to take up your space. Take up your space in business. They call it commercial space. Commercial space is a continuous area or expanse which is free, available, or unoccupied, an area rented or sold as business premises. It's available. Business space, it's available. You don't need to be jealous of somebody who has made billions. They are billions for you. Take up your space. If that's where you know your strength is, take it up. It's available. Don't allow anything to distract you. Don't allow people to toxify your space. Guard your space. Please guard your space. It's all you have. Protect it. Protect it in the name of Jesus. You know, be aware of what you hear. Be aware of who cancels you. Be aware who tells you what to do when things are not right or right. No need to wish your neighbors to have your own. And whatever comes on the way as you take up your space, don't forget that the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. Allow him to turn tables <laughs> on your enemy's side in the name of Jesus and stand and remain standing on your position. It's not your time. It's not your time to cry tears of sorrow now. It's time to cry tears of joy. It's your time for restoration. It's your time for breaking forth. Just shake up yourself and don't be in a hurry. You're not in a competition. Remember, you're taking just what God has given you and you're deciding that come rain, come shine, I am taking up my space. And what God has said about me, it is becoming in the mighty name of Jesus. So there are lessons I want us to learn, you know, uh, and to write on what we've learned in this uh, sermon of the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. You know, pray to God in everything that you do. Pray to God. That is number one. Nothing defeats prayer. I always say people, they compete about who's going to preach, who's going to sing, you know, who's going to do this and that. But they never compete of who's going to pray. Why? Because there's power in it and it's a warfare. So always pray to God. Remind God of his promises. Remind God of his promises. Always, you know, know them and speak them in your life, in your children's life, in every area of your life. Look up to the Lord all the time. Everything you need is in him. Be courageous. Even if, you know, you discourage, find courage in God. In the name of Jesus, depend on the strength of the Lord. Depend on the strength of the Lord. Worship him. Praise him. Have faith in him. Hallelujah.
Don't lose faith in God and always be joyful in the Lord. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord, when you've got the joy in you, that's where the strength is. When, when, when these rivers of living waters flow in you, that's where the strength is. So don't allow sadness. Don't allow anger. Don't allow toxic things to toxify you. You know, be joyful in him no matter what comes. And fear him. Fear him. That's where wisdom starts. Don't think what you do, it's because you're beautiful. Don't think what you do, it's because you're talented. Even that talent is from him. Honor him. Fear him. And serve him with your talents. Stay faithful to the Lord. Because he's a faithful God, he never changes. Stay faithful anyway. And surround yourself with the right people in your space. Surround yourself with people who are not going to say you are do, making yourself better. You think you are better. And always go back to the word of God. In everything, in every challenge that comes, whatever good that is coming, whatever bad that is coming, always go back to the word. It is everything to us. Who advises you and who counsels you is very important of who that is. So don't just take advices and counseling from people that you don't know who their source is. You know, be wise about who speaks in your life. Be wise about that. Stand. And after standing, remain standing in the mighty name of Jesus. And I want you to know that if you can practice what I said, speaking the promises of God, being courageous, speaking life to yourself and destroying those foundations and knowing that whatever that you are going through, the battle is not yours. You won't be able to fight it, but give it to the Lord, the author and the finisher of our faith. He is so faithful and he wants his glory to be revealed in your life. So in all that you do as you're taking up your space, Always remember that he's number one and keep great people around you. Keep on praying, have faith, fear him and don't fight. Don't even try to explain yourself. Don't even ask them. Even when you know what they're saying about you, greet them and bless them. Yeah, when you get to your closet, tell God and he will fight for you. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty pulling up strongholds. Sometimes the strongholds that we pull is the strongholds that are in us, in our minds, that makes us think we cannot do. And I'm saying to you, you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. Can I pray for you? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, oh God, for starting with us, Holy Spirit, in the battle that is not ours, that is yours. And I thank you for doing great things to your people wherever they are, transforming lives and changing lives. And I pray and I soak them in the blood of Jesus. And I pray, oh God, that it shall be known that the generation of this time has risen and looked up to you and spoke things and were changed because we trust in you and we believe in you. Bless that family, bless that lady, bless that child, bless that father, bless that uncle, Bless, O oh God, that nation, that village. Bless them and show yourself because you are still miracle working God. I pray for those who are in sick, in sick beds. I speak the healing of God and I command the angels of God to come and deliver that healing right now in the name of Jesus. And I plead the blood of Jesus and I say, no weapon fashioned against you will prosper in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. And don't fight. That, that battle, that war is not yours, is of the Lord. If you want to meet us, if you want to come and pray with us, if you want to meet us, we're in Kempton Park, Sunlam Center. The church is Dominion Life Changing Family Church. We are a family church. And I know if you come visit, your life will never be the same. Things are happening. We love you and, and we pray for you. Keep on keeping on and Love the Lord always. In Jesus' name, I love you. Good night.